How you doing, uh, brother? Oh, man, I'm, you know, better than I deserve. <laughs> yes, <laughs> you know? amen, brother. Amen. I just wanted to read something real quick uh, about, I think you were talking about uh, progressive sanctification. Was that, mm. was that right? Okay. Um, Paul does talk about put off the old self and put on the new self. Right. And I just did an interview with uh, Christopher Yuan, who used to be, um, who li- used to live a certain way sexually. And he, you know, he, he repented and converted, came to Christ. Um, he wrote a book about it. And, you know, he wrote a book recently on God, sexuality and the gospel. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I talked to him about it and, you you know, he, he, he can no longer live that way. You know what I mean? He can, he can, he can't be a, you know, a homosexual and then be a Christian. And then I got someone the next day or a few days after in the comments, bro, like saying you can't be gay and a Christian at the same time. And I'm like, bro, yeah, like, did you not listen to the interview? <laughs> you know what I mean? So people are going to still live the way, the way, the way they want to, according to the flesh, because they're fleshly. You know what I mean? They're dead in sin. You're going to be dead in sin. That's the best thing you're going to do in life is to be dead. Being like, I was good being dead, bro. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yo, I was really good. We, we I was didn't know good. nothing else. You know, we didn't know nothing else. You know what I mean? Um, so I was, you know, I, I've been studying the um, the catechisms and confessions lately, and I'm I'm at the Heidelberg Catechism and. Uh, you know what I mean? Uh, being a Presbyterian like yourself, man, um, you know, I'm just, I'm just enjoying the wisdom that has gone yeah, before man. us. And I've just been like chugging it. like, oh, oh. Yeah, <laughs> you know? and, and bro, I, I think to that point, bro, for those of you who are watching, wherever you stand at, whether you're um, a Pentecostal or Presbyterian or Baptist or Anglican or whatever, you would do well. All of us would do well to read and to study the confessions and um, the catechisms of others that have gone before us. And particularly, and, and I'm not trying to be biased here, particularly Heidelberg, um, the, the Westminster Confession of Faith, um, you know, the, the, the 1689 London Baptist Confession, like, especially those older ones, right? The three forms of unity, like, though, there, there's some beautiful language there that it's thoroughly, um, you know, theological. Um, and, and bro, there's another thing, man, like, cause the Heidelberg is beautiful as well. It's one of the most beautifully written, uh, catechisms, man. But if, if you, if, if the, one of the ways you can, uh, fast track, um, your knowledge in the word of God, obviously reading the word of God, right. Reading it. But like, we need to catechize ourselves. Like we, we need to, we need to be catechized. We need to catechize our children, but we need to catechize ourselves. And my brother, my, we started talking about catechism and Presbyterianism and my brother Daryl comes back in. <laughs> I, I had to, I had to, Pastor. Go ahead, go ahead. What's, What's up, up What's bro? up, beloved? What's up, beloved? What's up, what's up? But go ahead, Pastor. I didn't mean to cut you off. A lot of people, bro, we, we live in a culture where, and bro, I'm going to be completely honest, man. Like, I think one of the reasons why, um, I, let me say this, it's a blessing that God has called me to be a pastor because Lord knows I need to continually grow in my knowledge of God's word, right? So I spend every day in the word of God and and that's that's good for me and my sanctification, especially with the background I have because I wasn't catechized. I wasn't trained on, on, on these things that I hold to now. And so as, as I read the word, man, and I'm in it constantly, I'm seeing connections. Now I'm understanding covenant theology in a way that's so much richer now than it was five years ago. And, and, and I think, man, one of the, one of the things that we live in a culture that's biblically illiterate, right. And, and people don't, they don't know what they believe and why they believe it. And, and they, they go to sound bites. Right. And so if Paul Washer says it or Steve Lawson says it or my pastor says it and it sounds real good, then then, yeah, it's got to be true. And it's like, hold on, like like let's let's open up the word. And so I think these these catechisms and confessions, man, they're ways to um, to, to really wrap our minds around deep concepts in a way that's teachable and, 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 and we can meditate on it and think about it and grow in God's knowledge. So. Amen, bro. Amen. But I wanted to read uh, this, uh, the Heidelberg, man. I- I've been reading it recently. You know, I've been going through each catechism and just reading it for myself. Um, and it reminded me back to what you were saying earlier, Pastor E, about, uh, you know, 
progressive sanctification, how we cannot be earthly minded. Like we are on earth, but that doesn't mean we belong to this earth. You know what I mean? We, we, we used to, right? Uh, so it was just like, oh, that reminds me of the Lord's Day One. You know what I mean? When I first started reading the Heidelberg, and, and I just love how it starts off. Um, and this was created for lay people, and, and I, I'm one of them. So I was like, sign me up. You know, because I, mean? I like to read the the catechisms, but I also like to get back into the history of, you know, the politics behind it, the the creation, who wrote it, why, the audience. I like to get into all of that. Um, so, anyways, I'm reading Lord's Day One. You know what I mean? And what you were saying earlier, it reminded me of that. Mm -hmm. Of right, Lord's Day One. So question one, it says, what is your only comfort in life and in death? That's like a hardball question. That's a mm. worldview question. That's like, man, that's, that's a huge question. You could go up to anybody in the hood and be like, what is your only comfort in life? You, the, you know, you'll get like 20 different answers. You know, most likely they'll be like, you know, you know, my, my bottle of OE is my comfort, bro, you know, or, or whatever. My bag of weed is my comfort or whatever. You know what I mean? But mm -hmm. here, our answer is, is likewise. It should be this. It should be um, that I am not my own. Mm. I'm not my own, but belong body and soul and life and in death to my faithful Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Like, Amen. talk about being sold out, man. Talk about having a different perspective, a different paradigm, a different worldview, a different approach, different glasses. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like that right there was just like a huge summary about who we are as Christians. So if you call yourself a Christian, just read that, read that one little section right there. And you'll be like, yo, that that's what we should say. You know what I mean? That this mm -hmm. is our life and comfort. Like you don't have to agree with the Heidelberg. That's fine. But you have to agree with like, yes, I don't belong to myself. You know what I mean? And how many, um, Patrick, how many Christians have you counsel in your pastoral life? Right in your pastoral career, and you'd be like, the issue with this couple, it could could be easily summed up that they still believe that they be that they don't be that they still own themselves, right? That yes, your view of the lordship thing, right, mm -hmm. is not predominant in their life right now. You know, it's a theological issue, right? Yes, so obviously these people are struggling with marriage or or whatever, but. We, we, you know, those things need to be dealt with, but I'm sure you being a pastor, I'm sure you dealt with, you know, a, a, a counseling case of saying this people don't, don't understand the Lordship of Jesus mm -hmm. Christ in their lives and they don't belong to themselves. Right. Mm -hmm. I'm sure you dealt with that. Oh yeah, man. Yeah. And, and I think it goes back to, cause how, how that, that language there. And there's, let me show you something this, because this is another thing about the catechisms that's that's great, man. So like, all right, so it says, uh, what is thy only comfort in life and death? That I, with body and soul, both in life and death. Now you see that little, I don't know if you can see it, but there's a little A here. Let me see if I can mm -hmm. make this bigger. Hold on a second. What is that, a footnote? A little footnote. All right, so boom. All right. Mm -hmm. All right, where does that bring us to? That brings us to Romans 14. So what's Romans 14, 7 say? For none of us lives to himself and none of us dies to himself. All right. Then verse eight, for we live, for if we live, we live to the Lord. And if we die, we die to the Lord. So then whether we live or whether we die, we are the Lord's. And so the, the catechisms and the confessions do that. Like, um, I have a, a little book where it does that with the Westminster. So what is that? So what the confession is saying here is that we are slaves of Christ, right? And as slaves of Christ, I don't belong to myself. My master is Jesus. So if Jesus is my master, I need to go to the words of my master and see what he says. And, you know, again, I, I keep going back to this, but Matthew 28, what is Jesus what does Jesus want me to do? He wants me as his disciple to observe all that he's commanded, right? So he wants me to understand the law of God properly. He wants me to understand my children properly. He wants me to understand um, uh, the, the doctrine of ecclesiology properly, right? He wants me to understand. He, he wants me to stand on all that he's commanded, you know? Yeah. And, and so I don't have the right as a slave to make stuff up. 
I got to go back to what the master said. And and that's and that's progressive sanctification, right? Because even today, as I say that, sh- I'm sure that there's areas where I think I know better, <laughs> right? Yeah, 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 yeah. And the Holy Spirit is like, no, like, um, you misapplying, or that's not what that means, or you know. And I'm growing in my in, in grace, right? I'm growing, and so uh, that's a lifelong process. But yeah, I agree, man. There's times when you you're talking to people and you're counseling them, and you you thinking to yourself, I don't know if this person is a believer. Right, like they're in church, um, they're smiling like people smile, right? They they dress nice like people dress nice, but 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 there's no, it doesn't seem to be a change in their lives. Christ yeah. is that you know they they're not slaves to Christ. No, you're right, and, and I think you mentioned Matthew 28 earlier, mm-hmm. and I think mm-hmm. you said um, I, it says where Jesus gives us the command to make disciples. Of all nations, um, and he gives the command of teaching them yes, everything that yes. I have commanded you. Like that's a lot of that's a lot of stuff. Like <laughs> Jesus, Jesus, the words of Jesus, the red letters in the Bible and the Gospels. You know, it's a lot of red letters, man. It's a lot of implications. You know what I mean? And yeah, it's a lot of stuff that I need to reiterate to all of these people, right? And that's one of the things that when you said that, I was like, oh, dude, that's what the catechisms help. They, yes. they they don't replace they don't replace the red letters right yeah. they don't replace the red letters they're not better than the red letters they're they're not divine like the red letters but they right. are great helps man like if you're trying to reach a hood mm-hmm. you're like, man, where do I start man like you look at this guy over here look at that girl over there look at a baby walking down the street with a diaper like what do I do the great place to start is it, like it's already been done for you you know what I mean in a sense it's like yeah. a lot of, a lot of wise men in the past have already gotten together and debated and yes. prayed and spent their life savings a lot of the times and sold their farms and risked their lives mm. to to write down and help to write down a curriculum per se per se. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So I would encourage everybody to be like, these things are meant for helps. You know what I mean? They're meant mm. to help. And, and, you know, like I said, the Heidelberg was written for, for, for non-educated people, illiterates, mm. right? And we live in a day and age where bachelor's degrees are being handed out, like, left and right. I don't know if you noticed that, but, like, everybody two, has a Two illiterate people. <laughs> I'm like, everybody has a bachelor's degree, man. Like, yeah. congratulations. You, you went through it. Good. Good for you. Whatever. But... For some reason, everybody has a bachelor's degree nowadays, man. But look, look at the world, man. They're still, they're still ignorant. Mm. I think Elon Musk said something to the effect of saying, "You can have a bachelor's degree, that doesn't necessarily mean you're intelligent, because a lot of people have bachelor's degrees and they're still dumb. (laughs) They're still Mm -hmm. stupid people." I was like, "Well, yeah, yeah, yeah." I guess you know, there's a lot of dumb people out there who have um, education under the belt, right? But Mm -hmm. Heidelberg, like, if you're out there thinking, which catechism should i start off with i would you know i've been studying the heidelberg obviously i'm a presbyterian i I like the west west better but the west west was written for scholarly people it was written Mm -hmm. for like some like nerds and if you don't if you don't like that that's fine just work your way down i would suggest starting off with the heidelberg because it was written for like illiterates Mm -hmm. right it's beautiful too man it's a beautiful thing and it's like and it has it's the only one that i found so far in my studies that it is like written with uh uh scripture verses right next to the what you call it um to the to the statements 